वेलकम यूर वॉचिंग द न्यूज ट्रैक आई एम राहुल कमल दे बीन सो मच कॉन्वर्सेशन इन द बिल्ड अप टू दिस इलेक्शन अबाउट बिहार महाराष्ट्र कर्नाटक एंड सो मेनी अदर स्टेट्स आई वॉन्ट टू फोकस टू नाइट ऑन द की बैटल ग्राउंड स्टेट ऑफ पंजाब बिकॉज नॉट सिंस नाइनटीन नाइनटी सिक्स हैज पंजाब सीन अ फोर कॉर्नर्ड फाइट the bjp and the akali is making clear that there will be no nda alliance in punjab the aam aadmi party is on the back foot with its top boss arvind kejriwal behind bars so how does a four cornered contest impact political equations in punjab we've got key voices from all the four players uh, from the ruling aam aadmi party its chief national spokesperson jasmine shah leader of the opposition in the punjab assembly congress uh, leader pratap singh bajwa making his television debut india's former ambassador to the united states a man who comes from a very pedigreed family in punjab's amritsar uh, taranjit singh sandhu now the member of the bharatiya janata party and the likely bjp candidate from the seat of amritsar and we've got long time akali stalwart Naresh Gujral so four key voices from the four pillars of Punjab politics how does a four cornered contest play out in this big state that's my top focus on the news track BJP declares war for Punjab first full fledged push in state after congress's bitto joins BJP and aap biggies follow suit aan wale dinan de vich main bahut kuch dassanga with proof de naal par eh jehde lok jehdiyan afaan phala rahe hai mission lotus diyan lain den diyan ore tu mera parivar ja main darn wala nahi par jehda mission lotus hai oh bilkul fake hai bjp flexes big for the first time this is a movement which is heading in the direction of strengthening of democracy war for punjab is hotting up big focus on news track today was a day of frenetic activity in the battleground state of punjab yesterday you had a congress mp ravneet bittu joining the bjp today two key aap leaders one an mp the other an mla joined the bharatiya janata party the bjp making aggressive maneuvers in punjab after announcing that the akalis and the bjp will fight separately the congress and the aap cannot fight together because they are one and two in uh, ruling government and key opposition party in the state of punjab this time unlike the situation in the last several elections going back to the 90s will have a four pronged fight which makes things highly fluid uncertain and therefore from a cephalogical election analysis analysis perspective very very interesting and we'll start speaking to leaders from the key parties in just a moment let me take you through all that's happened in the battleground state of punjab today punjab's political scene takes a four way twist no partnership between india's major blocks aam aadmi party and congress the long standing allies the shiromani akali dal and the bjp remain apart since their split 4 years ago due to the farm laws bhartiya janata party punjab de lok sabha chon kalle ladan ja rahi hai punjab di jawani punjab di kisani punjab de vyapari punjab de sanatkar punjab de mazdoor sada pichhde varg saryan di behtari vaste ek ujjwal bhavikh vaste aa faisla le hai the bjp's solo stance follows the shiromani akali dal's decision its significant regional partner for nearly a quarter century from 1996 to 2020 outlining a punjab centric farmer focused and seek specific political agenda in its resolution on friday last time these two parties ran separately for the lok sabha was in 1996 they patched up later that year before in 1989 simranjit singh man's party swept the general election in a six cornered contest aj niya delhi di partiyan national partiyan oh da ap kalli vote di rajniti kardiyan assi vote di rajniti wale nahi hai sade vaste punjab hai in 2019 the kali bjp alliance secured two lok sabha seats 
each across 13 parliamentary constituencies of Punjab. Under Chief Minister Amarinder Singh, Congress backed eight seats and the Aam Aadmi Party won. Aam Aadmi Party dominated the assembly polls three years later. While the Shiromani Akali Dal and its ally BSP had limited success. Punjab races for a four-way electoral showdown, blending regional and cultural themes in the campaign. Bureau Report, India Today. Who does a four-cornered contest in Punjab help? Who does it hurt? Joining us now is the leader of the opposition in the Punjab Assembly, Pratap Singh Bajwa, joins us on India Today. Bajwa ji, Satsrikal, it's now quite clear that the BJP and the Akalis will fight separately in Punjab. It is also clear that it is impossible for the Congress and the Aam Aadmi Party to be together in Punjab because you are one and two as far as the data is concerned. But in Delhi, the AAP and the Congress are fighting together. That puts you as the leader of the opposition in this very awkward position where in Delhi the likes of Sandeep Dikshit, Arvinder Lovely are allying with the Aam Aadmi Party but you have to fight Bhagwant Maan. How do you see this four-pronged battle? Not since the mid-90s has Punjab seen the four-cornered race. Who does this help? Who does it hurt? Is it disadvantage Congress because you have this very awkward situation with the ruling Aam Aadmi Party now in Punjab? See, Rahul, the thing is that since day one, since the last two years, it is the Congress versus the AAP because we are at number two, they are at number one. So from day one, we had told a party high command under no circumstances we want to touch the AAP even with a barge pole. See, the main opposition comes from us because we are the main opposition. This is what I had told them. If we come together, the anti-incumbency vote goes then to the third or the fourth party now. See, we are very well placed. We are today playing the role just like regional players, like Akali Dal used to play a role you in know, Punjab. What makes you think you're so well placed? Today because the Congress in let, Punjab me, let me go by the data. There have been two bipoles recently in Punjab. Sure. In Jalandhar, which was represented by the Congress since 1999, uh, you put up Santok Chaudhary's widow, Kamaljeet Kaur Chaudhary, to encash the sympathy factor. You lost uh, by a big margin. Also in Sangroor, uh, which was uh, a bipole caused by uh, Bhagwant Maan becoming Chief Minister, there was an election. Once again, you lost so badly that you lost your deposit. So what makes you think you're doing well, Mr. Bajwa? See, uh, Rahul, the thing is, the first uh, uh, bipole that took place was in Sangroor. At that time, <laughs> this our party had won that uh, out of nine segments in the whole parliament constituency. There are nine segments. They had won by a whopping 5,70,000 votes. And within three months, within three months of Bhagwant becoming the chief minister, they lose to a, uh, to a player like Mr. Simranji Singh Man. So people had decided they wanted to vote against Bhagwant Mans, they opted for Sibranji Singh Man. See, at that time, uh, we were obviously uh, not, uh, uh, we had still sustained that major defeat in Punjab. By the time we came to Jalandhar, see, our vote bank from just 8 or 10 percent in Sangroor went up to almost 28 percent. We didn't lose very badly, we lost by 50,000 votes. Obviously, by that time, Bhagwant had realized if he loses his second bipole from Jalandhar, he would be shifted, he would be changed, they would be looking for somebody else. So the whole of the government, as you understand in, uh, in Punjab, Haryana, even in uh, uh, Himachal, the government plays a very major role. All uh, the whole of the administration, the police and the civil administration played a major role. See, today, uh, after these couple of one year, the, the, this AAP is completely mauled. I, I feel they are standing at around 24 to 25 percent poll. This is your poll. See, the survey that uh, was conducted, All India survey by you, your channel only showed Congress at 31 percent. No, sir, but they the fact also is if the Congress is doing so exactly well, going, but what? if the Congress is doing so well, then why are party loyalists yeah. like Ludhiana MP Ravneet Bittu joining the BJP? He's, you know, he's the grandson of Bian Singh, a formidable see, Congress leader, MP from Ludhiana. He's joining the BJP. 
आप लीडर्स आर ज्वाइनिंग द बीजेपी सिटिंग एम पीज एम एल एज आर ज्वाइनिंग द बीजेपी फ्रॉम जलंधर दैट वुड मेक द बीजेपी से बॉस द विंड इज ब्लोइंग इन आर फेवर See Rahul you must understand BJP has unleashed whole of these agencies a lot of money is uh, changing hands over there so the whole pressure from the BJP you understand this is what they are doing in whole of India Punjab till date was uh, not part of their uh, all uh, the agenda now they are shifting the focus to Punjab also Ravneet Singh Bittu See, Ravneet Singh Bittu is a grandson of Sabyan Singh. I think so. He was physically eliminated in 1995, but uh, ideologically he has been eliminated just yesterday, since his son has left. This family has been the biggest beneficiaries of the Congress. He was a sitting MP, but uh, you must understand, Rahul. There are various kind of politicians. Some people fight over ideology. Some people fight over uh, gains of office. This person is retaining three big offices. I I don't think so. Even at the time of the British, the Viceroy Lord Curzon had this kind of a paraphernalia. He is Z plus in security. He is having the same security that uh, uh, Mr. Yogi has in the, being the Chief Minister of uh, UP. He is holding out to three official residences, one in Delhi. They have been given an eight canal house near the governor's house in Chandigarh since the last couple of years. No, so if he's he doing so well, why is he left? Sir, if, if, he, if the Ludhiya. Congress was See. so strong, then See. why is one of your See. most flamboyant, well-known, respected MPs leaving? See, so they are leaving only because they want to retain all these offices. They want to retain all the benefits of office, and he exactly knew, knew that he is not winning. See, the only thing is, this uh, a member of parliament has been perpetually not meeting people, not attending to calls for the last ten years. He was badly exposed in Ludhiana. So, just feeling threatened, he today has left and is asking the BJP to shift him to a seat like an Anpur Sahib. So, these kind of fish you have, you have seen so many of people. The other this problem you have the the is that uh, Navjot Singh this Sindhu is, is back. Uh, he was uh, out of action for a while when the sentence was being served. You and he don't have a very good equation. Uh, he seems to have a good equation with the Gandhis, particularly Priyanka Gandhi Vadra, who seems to be quite fond of him. Now he seems to be coming back. What role will he play in this election, Mr. Bajwa? See, we, I have no uh, differences with Navjot. It is, I was one of the persons who was instrumental of Navjot joining the Congress. You have taken it, uh, uh, I'm extremely sorry that uh, somebody has not uh, uh, mentioned this to you. The real facts are, we are very much fond of him. He, he would be utilized wherever his services are required. He's already told the party high command that I will not be contesting because his wife is unwell. Can I just Number quote two, to you and to our viewers some of what me. you've said about Siddhu Paji in the past. You yeah. asked Siddhu to act with maturity, digest the honour given by the what party, it, put the blame on him from the Congress tally coming down from 78 seats in 2017 to 18 seats in the 2022 Punjab Assembly. You told Siddhu not to hold separate <laughs> akhadas and come See, to the party Adam. stage while joining the party cadre. Are you saying that? No, no, no. So when, when, when have I said, I haven't said it. So in, 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 a, in, a, in a party, you have minor differences. And as an elder, I am elder to him, senior to him in the party. I've just told him, don't open up different akharas. Come on one stage and whatever you want to say. He wanted to put up some agenda on Punjab. I said, this agenda should be on the Congress stage. Please don't put up your uh, other stage. So there's nothing wrong. Are more MPs is, likely this to is leave? A kind of a there is some, which has because come to a, Kerala and Punjab were the two states where the I, Congress did well. I don't want to name anyone because that hasn't happened yet, but you know well that there are MPs from Punjab about whom there's a lot of buzz in the national capital that they would be the next to jump. I don't think so. Anybody who's wedded to the ideology will not jump. People who have no character who have come into politics just to remain in power can always jump. They are jumping from BJP to the Congress, from Congress to BJP. This has been happening in the past. Most of these uh, members of parliament, I have been for two terms, both in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. I, I was uh, astonished so many times sitting in parliament along with them in the central hall. 
If I spoke to somebody from UP, his grandfather was in the Congress. His father came in the, into the Smajwadi. He came into okay. uh, he came in uh, with the BSP. Now they are all uh, fully docked in the uh, BJP. Okay, so, last so last question. Talk about the Akalis, most of the Indian politicians. The so, the Akalis are pivoting yeah. towards Panthic politics. The statement yeah. that they put out, they're asking for people convicted of murder, yeah. terrorism to be released. Do you see that as being a major factor from now on? Because the Akalis and the BJP are separate, so there's nothing to moderate them, rein them in, check their Panthic tendencies. Do you see a lot of that play out now? How concerned are you about that? See, see Rahul, the thing is, they have come down to three assembly segments. It, uh, Along with the Congress, Congress is 137 years old. Akali Dal is almost 103 to 4 years old. It, uh, it was established in 1920. So they have, they have realized that if we somehow put in alliance with the BJP, we will completely finish because their vote bank is in the rural Punjab, either the farmers or the Sikhs, and none of the Sikh issues or the Punjab issues have been addressed by the Modi government. Okay. How could they have had alliance? Had they had alliance, Akali's, Akali's fully felt they would have been totally demolished. I think so. I would congratulate uh, Sukhbir Singh Badal for the first time after a long time. He is acted with a lot of majority. He's acted with majority. And I think so. Regional players should act with major, uh, maturity and they should stand up to policies of governments which are uh, you, uh, not giving, uh, you could say, justice to the farmers. They are not giving justice to a state like Punjab. Uh, it's a minority, majority state. I, the Sikh issues have not been addressed. The farmer issues have not been addressed. We, we only had one trading route, uh, Atari. They have closed down that trading route since the last 10 years. Okay. They're opening up new ports in Gujarat and other states. And they have blocked whatever. It's an economic blockade of Punjab. I think so. The, what the Kalis have done and what Congress is doing is really doing for the, uh, for the interest of the state of Punjab. Interesting. And the Kalis and the Congress take over anybody for the first see, Rahul, time on on record. Yes, Rahul, just on record. See for you. Just just a second, please. Don't hurry. On record, I'll tell you, we will meet after the 1st of June, whenever this BJP will not even win a single parliament seat. This is my open challenge to you. Let okay. them try. Uh, anybody, let them try any trick, let them take anybody, whosoever is le leaving the Congress today uh, would be practically, politically completely demolished. Okay, interesting I think with facet. Leaving, he's committed a political harakiri for himself. Interesting facet of Punjab Haan. politics. He's there. committed a political harakiri. Congress appreciating who wants to leave what the Akalis are doing. Uh, thank you very much, Pratap Bajwa, yeah. for joining us. No, no, not appreciate. I think this is something good. Okay, okay. sure. Thank you, sir. Sure. Very thank interesting, you, exciting politics. I hope, there. Leader uh, of the opposition, we Pratap Bajwa. After the first of June. No, no, sir. I yeah, hope to meet you. you on the campaign trail while we're thank in uh, Punjab, you, while Rahul. the elections are going on. Not, not on the fourth yeah. of June. Much before that. And, God willing. And, Sure. Thank well, you. Why not? Why not? And my my prediction would come out true. BJP will not even win a single parliament seat in Punjab this time. Chalo, Jeev. Okay. Wait there. Thank, thank you, you so much. Pratap Bajwa for joining us in the news track. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How does the arrest of the Delhi chief minister impact the political dynamics for the Aam Admi Party in Punjab? Today is a day when two prominent AAP leaders joined uh, the BJP, including AAP's lone Lok Sabha MP Sushil Kumar Rinku. Uh, and an AAP MLA uh, has also joined the BJP. Joining us now is the party's chief national spokesperson, Jasmine Shah. You were on the broadcast yesterday. We were discussing the AAP's woes in Delhi. Uh, now in Punjab itself, it seems that the floodgates are opening. Two leaders are already gone. There are ED cases against others. There are questions whether in Kejriwal's absence, Bhagwant Man can hold these 92-odd leaders together or could AAP as some of the experts we've been speaking to have suggested, be facing a potential implosion of sorts where some elements of AAP leadership start switching to other parties now. Uh, Rahul, it, your word implosion made me smile because uh, there is nothing even similar or close to it uh, that we are seeing in Punjab. But let me agree with one fact that you mentioned. Over the last 48 to 72 hours, ever since Mr. Kejriwal has been illegally arrested in a completely fake uh, so-called Delhi liquor scam. Uh, attempts by BJP, Operation Lotus by BJP has reached fifth gear. 
every mp and mla of aam aadmi party without any exception is getting calls today we did a press conference and so we were saying every mp aapka ek hi to mp hai wahan pe वो भी चला गया वी हैव राज्य नो नो राज्यसभा एमपी भी तो है हमारे पास सात राज्यसभा एमपी है वी हैव वन लोकसभा टोटल वी हैव एट एमपीज एंड वी हैव 92 टू एम एल एज ऑल ऑफ देम आर फर्स्ट बींग आस्ट टू यू नो टू कम फॉर ट्वेंटी और यू नो बोली लगाई जा रही है बीस से पच्चीस करोड़ एंड फॉर पीपल हु आर रिफ्यूजिंग ईडी एंड सी बी आई इज द इमीडिएट नेक्स्ट थ्रेट सो येस टूडे वी हैव हैड यू नो वन एम पी एंड वन एम एल एज लेफ्ट आई मीन ऑपरेशन लोटस आठ हजार करोड़ अगर आपने इलेक्ट्रल बॉन्ड के पैसे इकट्ठा किए तो कहीं तो खर्च करोगे बट लुक एट दिस यू नो द पर्सन द एम पी फ्रॉम जलंधर हु इज नाउ स्विच टू बीजेपी सुशील कुमार रिंकू ही लॉस्ट एन असेंबली इलेक्शन इन पंजाब लास्ट टाइम यू नो वेन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू वेन आप केम टू पावर एंड इट वॉज बिकॉज मिस्टर केजरीवाल एंड मान कैंपेन फॉर हिम इन द लोकसभा इलेक्शन द बाईपोल ही वन बाय अज मार्जिन सो वॉट डज दिस शो इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट द एनालिसिस इज दैट दिस इज द आम आदमी पार्टी वोट the party vote is only going to consolidated because of these attempts a to to imprison aam aadmi party leaders but second to try and put pro money into the face of uh, uh, you know people in punjab but frankly jasmin it's an day. awkward situation for the aam aadmi party because in delhi arvinda lovely sandeep dikshit you atishi are on the same side now in punjab the likes of bhagwant man raghav chadda once he comes back from london and uh, whether it's a pratap bajwa or others in the congress have to fight with each other so that is always very very tricky there's a big ram leela rally on the 31st you want congress leaders to come and speak in your favor speak about kejriwal's arrest and it's supposed to be one mega show of strength and there you're breaking each other's heads metaphorically speaking and therefore it's a very very complicated situation which can't possibly be to your advantage Uh, no rahul i think the narrative pan india of the india lens is very clear that what we are seeing today here is an attempt by bjp and mr modi to decimate the opposition you know freeze their bank accounts put their leaders into jail no trial no investigation you know but just cook up charges use ed abuse abu and jail these people and that is why the india alliance was formed and for that every person of india alliance beat in any state and beat in any party is going to unite and come together for this rally on 31st as far as punjab is concerned aam aadmi party has taken a decision that the kind of support that we are seeing the kind of outpouring of support that we are seeing from the people of punjab we are very confident this is going to be a 13 nil scenario we are not even fearing that any seats are going to be conceded to bjp or akali dal or congress for that matter i mean think about bjp and akali dal unki haisiyat kya hai punjab mein bjp is restricted to three seats rahul they can they are they become an auto rickshaw party akali dal which calls itself the largest party of punjab is restricted to two seats they have become a scooter party in punjab so really the tussle is only between aam aadmi party and congress but with the kind of work that uh, the chief minister man has done in the last two years we are very confident that we will go to the people and tell them that no but remember in the last lok sabha elections it's the congress which is the principal beneficiary because people thought if it's a national election congress has the bigger national role to play like was the case in kerala where the congress did better than the ldf that could play in punjab as well that it's the congress which has the larger national role and therefore the beneficiary of whatever anti bjp anti sentiment anti center sentiment there is in punjab uh, accrues to the congress and not to the aap uh, there are two important differences rahul between 2019 and 2024 first and foremost aam aadmi party has become a national party it's no longer a state party it's no longer a regional party we have sizable vote shares in states like goa gujarat definitely in punjab and delhi where we have governments so a vote for aap is a vote for a national alternative not a local alternative second at the end of the day if the aam aadmi uh, uh, party mp is going to be part of the india alliance at the center so there is no differentiating the fact the, the anti bjp vote is not divided between uh, uh, these two parties people are going to vote for aam aadmi party as a reward for the work that they have done if we were not so confident about the amazing work that has happened in punjab people never imagined that bijli free aa sakti hai uh, so many good measures for edu uh, education for agriculture you know we are seeing a uh, doorstep delivery of services doorstep delivery of ration people are sitting at home and the ration is being delivered never happened in the history of india so it's on the basis it's the confidence of this good work that has made us uh, go with a mandate for all 13 lok sabha seats hamara jo nara hai is bar punjab mein punjab banega hero is bar 13 okay 13 is your nara let's see how the people of punjab perceive this jasmine shah for joining me on the news track thank you
Thank you. A four-cornered fight in Punjab. Who does this help? Who does this hurt? How does the decision of the Akalis and the BJP to fight separately change the political equation in this key uh, border state? Joining us on this broadcast, Harmeet Shah Singh, senior editor at India Today. Uh, with us is Kamaljeet Kaur Sandhu, our uh, bureau chief in Punjab. Kamar Sandhu is a political analyst. He's been a politician, former journalist, understands the ins and outs of Punjab politics. We have Professor Pramod Kumar, chairperson of the Institute for the Development and Communication, uh, former chairperson of the Punjab Governance Reforms Commission. Harmeet, first to you. Why did the Akali BJP alliance not materialize? What went wrong? I think it's a conundrum for the Shiromni Akali Dal in the first place that uh, it has to go alone in this election. Uh, there was uh, the farm agitation happening and that farm agitation was built on the premise of uh, uh, legal guarantee for farmers. So that uh, really went bad in the sense that you saw uh, all that happened at Shambhu border, uh, the Haryana police uh, using uh, force on farmers. So I think uh, it was uh, some sort of a compulsion uh, for uh, the, the, the Shiromni Akali Dal uh, not to go with the BJP in the light of what all happened uh, in the farm agitation at Shambhu, just close on the heels of uh, general elections. That's one part. The other part is that uh, the Shiromni Akali Dal, uh, I think, is uh, also trying to recover its own uh, turf, which it uh, lost uh, probably over the last 30 years or so. Uh, I'll be short and crisp here that uh, you know, in MOGA declaration of 20, uh, 1996, it went back from its uh, core constituency, which was uh, uh, six centric, farmer centric, and, and, and it uh, switched to uh, uh, more national leaning politics. Uh, that helped uh, in some sense because it happened in the wake of uh, Punjab militancy uh, and, and the Shromi Akali Dal and BJP came to power twice. Uh, but what all happened in 2015, which was, which was uh, the incidents, um, incidents of uh, um, sacrilege uh, and the subsequent role of the SGPC and the SGPC appointed Akal Tak Jatetar, I think uh, that took the winds out of uh, the Shromi Akali Dal's sails. And uh, seven years down the line, it's the party is in the doldrums and is trying to recover that turf. I'm not too sure that this will happen so immediately uh, that you know you you don't tie up with the BJP and uh, you know you go back to your Panthak origins and uh, the voters will start gathering around you. But perhaps in the long run you may have something uh, to boast about. So the pivot to Panthik yes. origins is what the Akalis are attempting. Remember, they're down to 18.38% vote share in the last assembly elections of 2022. They had only three seats and down to 18.38% vote share. Kamar Sandhu, a four-pronged fight in between having an Akali BJP alliance and not because Congress and AAP could never tie up in Punjab because they're one and two. Now that this alliance is not happening, who does it help? Who does it hurt? Rahul, uh, it's a little early to uh, to comment on this or analyze this aspect because, as you know, the elections in Punjab are in the last phase. The people of Punjab go to polls on, on the 1st of June, so which is two months from now. So a lot could actually happen the, in the next uh, uh, two months. Uh, as you know, there are developments taking place almost every day. We have had some major defections uh, two days ago. Some people defected even today. Uh, but uh, having said that, I think uh, uh, if, uh, as on date, I think the situation that has developed, it looks like uh, advantage Aam Aadmi Party. It looks like a repeat of uh, the 2022 uh, assembly polls in Punjab. That is the time we had a four-cornered uh, contest. And uh, out of the blue, the Aam Aadmi Party came up and they won 92 seats. But then that, those were the assembly elections and now we had the Lok Sabha elections. So there is a lot of difference. And also having said that, I would say that uh, there are two or three things that have changed. One, the BJP this time is very aggressive, as we all know. I mean, um, there were ED raids, uh, enforcement directorate raids even today. As to how these raids have taken place at this point of time, I wonder. Uh, but at the same time, the BJP is very clear that they don't want to appear soft on, on certain, on the radical elements. 
because that could harm the BJP in the rest of the country. Uh, that is what uh, the Akali Dal was hoping that some of the, 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 the people, uh, the Sikh prisoners who are behind bars would be released. The BJP obviously did not agree to that because that would mean that they are being soft on the radicals. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, the, the Aam Admi Party could well implode in the next two months. I, I, I fear that with Arvind Kejriwal behind bars, uh, uh, I'm not sure if the second-rung leadership, and in fact, there is no second-rung leadership in the Aam Admi Party. I'm not sure if uh, with Arvind Kejriwal behind bars, if he's not able to, able to operate openly, if Bhagwant Maan can keep the, the flock of 92 people uh, together. There are some of them who are facing ED raids. Some of them have already had uh, enforcement directed raids. Some of the ministers are feeling stifled because of the interference from Delhi. A lot of MLAs are unhappy. We have the case of Kumar Vijay Pradab, who's been talking openly against the party. So, uh, as I said, a lot could actually happen in the, the okay. next Okay, uh, so important two points there from Kamar Sandhu. Professor Pramod Kumar. Uh, how does Kejriwal's arrest, in your view, impact political dynamics in Punjab? It's not just the BJP and the Akalis who are fighting separately. The super boss of the Aam Aadmi Party is now in jail. Will the AAP hold together or could there be an implosion of the kind that Kamar Sandhu is talking about? Uh, I agree with Kamar. Uh, the situation in the next one or two months will certainly change. And the uh, Aam Aadmi Party has already lost its sheen. And uh, this kind of uh, effect, I mean, which Kejri was the rest, will certainly, I mean, no, will not be, I mean, to the advantage of the AAP. But at the same time, the Congress and the Akalis are also trying to reclaim their lost space. And BJP is overconfident of being the accidental beneficiary of this flux. Now, this is the situation. The, now there is no alliance. Had there been alliance, for Akali Dal, the choice was to go for conditional alliance or non-conditional alliance. BJP was in, interested in having a non-conditional alliance, which means Akali and BJP will suffer both losses and undignified loss. Had they entered a dignified uh, uh, conditional alliance, for example, with two filters, at least three filters, one, uh, the Bandi Singh issue, second, farmers issue, third, federalism, and which was the basis of 1996 MOGA declaration. So it's actually BJP has gone back from its own uh, alliance basis. Akali Dal wanted to have a conditional alliance on these. Had they entered to alliance, they would have won a very decisive victory in Punjab. So I personally think by not entering into alliance, they have lost one great Why do you think the alliance now? didn't happen? Forget what the leaders are saying on camera. From your understanding yeah. of Punjab politics, Professor Kumar, why do you think this alliance failed to materialize? There were two reasons. One, the BJP is overconfident and very aggressive, as Kamara has already pointed out. And they think that by poaching, I mean, leaders are uh, from Abhinder Singh to Rinku, they can just, I mean, uh, uh, capture the Punjab's uh, political domain. No, but I if like a Ravneet Bittu leaves Congress to join the BJP, do you think he can take the seat with him, a seat like Ludhiana? Yeah, because I, there is anger in parts of Punjab with the central government. But he's a formidable leader. He's Bian Singh's grandson. Can he take the seat with him to the BJP? Yeah, Amrinder Singh is a formidable leader. So is uh, Sunil Jakhar. So is, I mean, Rinku. So is uh, all the, uh, 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 this man, I mean, uh, Taranji Singh Sandhu. All are formidable. Punjab demography, electoral demo demography is totally different. Here, Hindu Dalit decide who will be the Jar chief minister. Now, there, uh, the Dalits, I mean, may not, I mean, all of them may not go along with them in uh, BJP. So a section of Hindus may go with the Congress or with the Kali. And uh, Jartiks are at least, I mean, will not go with BJP. Now the situation is in a flux. And I will uh, fully go with the, what Kamar was saying, that we are basically heading for a fragmented verdict. Okay, and last time the Congress had eight, not help the people. you're saying this time it's likely to be fragmented. Uh, Kamalji yeah. Sandhu, you're on the field tracking all the campaigns. Who's looking the most enthusiastic about this campaign or all, are they all looking very because they still don't know who's on their side and who's not? 
Rahul, uh, Punjab looks like a divided house and in earlier stages what we can say is uh, that as far as uh, alliances are concerned which have not happened, neither have the Aam Aadmi Party Congress alliance happened or nor has uh, the, the uh, BJP or Shivani Akali Dal fractified. So what is now going to happen is that this is going to be a divided house and this is going to be advantage BJP in many ways because remember as far as the last elections were concerned, 8 out of the 13 seats were actually won by Congress party. Now now with the BJP's posting skills and with the having Ravneet Singh, uh, Ravneet Singh Bittu as well as uh, Sushil Kumar Rinku, uh, two major uh, players in, uh, op uh, in, in the parties opponent to them, uh, they've managed to take them away and there are talks about other member of parliament who could be in talks with BJP. Uh, this could be a game changer of sorts. Now as far as the voting pattern is concerned, not just about the caste equation and the religious equations, what is important and significant is uh, how do really people vote? And and we've seen a pattern that whosoever is in the center, uh, the Punjab has always uh, voted against the grain. Uh, so in that particular sense, a different strategy by BJP at this point of time uh, makes sure that nobody is the main gainer. Uh, so the Aam Aadmi Party is in a flux and obviously with Arvind Kejriwal going behind bars, uh, it is now left to Bhagwant Man and they'll have to field another candidate in place of Jalandhar. Now we know at least five of the MLAs and the ministers who've been uh, fielded by Aam Aadmi Party. So a whole lot of equations are okay. yet to be formed and the other is because the candidates are not declared yet it's kind of too early but it looks like a divided vote a divided strategy and it looks like uh, the BJP it's not the main gainer will try and ensure that the other parties don't gain as well so important points in that conversation one Punjab goes to vote last so there's still time to go and the picture is still emerging B there may be no one big gainer the gains could get split uh, which ultimately could be advantage BJP because you don't want one party like the Congress to come back with 8 or 9 or 10 seats. You want to avoid that. And the Aam Aadmi Party, because of the challenges that it's facing with its leader being in jail, will now likely be on the defensive because you've got leaders, uh, as Professor Kumar mentioned, we've got ED cases, some of them may switch. So a lot of flux and fluidity and I'm glad this conversation has been able to capture some of it. Harmeet, uh, Kamaljeet, Kamar Sandhu and Professor Kumar for joining me on the news track. Thank you very much. The Bharatiya Janta Party and the Akali Dal fighting separately, throwing open the prospects of a four-cornered fight in Punjab. What happens in this crucial battleground state? The Congress and the Aam Aadmi Party have to fight separately. There's a lot of talk about the Akalis and the BJP potentially coming together and last minute alliance. That now also, from what we've heard from the BJP state president, isn't happening. Joining me now is Naresh Gujral, senior leader of the Akhali Dal, somebody who's seen the ins and outs of Punjab politics over the decades. Mr. Gujral, welcome and it's good to have you with us. Why is it that the Akhalis and the BJP, despite party okay. leaders on both sides saying they wanted an alliance, why is it that they couldn't come together and forge an alliance this time round? Rahul, you're right. We we wanted to come together. There were a couple of rounds of talks, but unfortunately they did not fructify because Akali Dal had put forward certain demands, which are really the aspirations of the farmers and the Punjabis. And uh, unfortunately, the BJP could not meet them. Hence, now you see that we will fight separately. No, but can you explain what is it specifically that went wrong? Was it a problem about who gets how many seats? What was the well, issue? Look, I think that was incidental. The main issue was that why did we split in the first place? We were the oldest allies of BJP. But we separated on the issue of the farmers. You would recall when the farmers were agitating for over seven months. That is the time we decided to separate from the BJP. At that time, after seven months and almost 650 deaths later, the Prime Minister came on national television, asked the farmers to go back and assured them that talks would be held and a solution will be found to their demands. Unfortunately, in the last two to three years, nothing has been done and the farmers are again on the road. Now, we are a farmers party. 95% of our cadre are farmers. Our leadership is all, are all farmers. Now, how can we justify 
coalescing with a party which has not paid heed to the farmers' demands even after giving them assurances. So that is the crux of the problem. You know, I'm also looking at this statement that's been put out by the Akalis after it was made clear that there'll be no truck with the BJP in this election, which talks a lot about, uh, you know, people who've been convicted on various cases actually being freed. Uh, the release of Bundy Singhs who've completed their term, that this is a promise that's been made. And if you go down the list of people who are being asked to be freed, it seems that the Akali Dal is pivoting once again to hardcore Panthic politics. Is that how you hope to find your identity again now that you're not in alliance with the BJP? Rahul, we believe that the laws of the land should be applied to everybody equitably. You cannot differentiate. We have certain laws. There are people who have, who have finished their terms. There are people who were convicted for 18 years. They've been languishing in jails for over 30 years. Now, the, this is the demand of all Punjabis, and especially the, 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 the party that represents them, that those who have finished their terms, you let them free. You've done it in other parts of the country. Even, even Rajiv Gandhi's killers have been released. Why are you not, or, or in, a, in a way, singling out one community? And the community feels very hurt. And assurances were given to this community time and again, but those assurances have not been kept. But this also is a very dangerous game to play because people who've been convicted of murder, people who've been convicted of terrorism, if the Akali start waving their flags, then in rural Punjab, uh, which is always a hotspot for all kinds of activities as we've seen in the 80s and the 90s, uh, that, is a, that is a fire that can explode if uh, the Akalis go down this route. We are not going down any route. All we are saying is the laws of the country are same for every community and every state. Those who have completed their terms, who have, in fact, there were people who were convicted for 18 years or life imprisonment, have spent over 35 years. Others have been given, as I said, even Rajiv Gandhi's killers have been let free now. Paroles have been given. In this case, no parole is given. We are not saying that the killers uh, uh, that you killed today and tomorrow you should be released. Yes, we respect the laws of the nation. But at the same time, the laws must be uniformly implemented in this country and not one community should not be seen as victims of those laws. And the fact also is that Akalis are now a diminished force in Punjab politics. The real battle is between the AAP and the Congress and uh, Akalis and the BJP, now that they're especially fighting separately, uh, are not quite the force that they used to be. Is that uh, a fair statement, do you think, or would you like to contest that? The date, that's what I the data that says. Your opinion. No, sir, I'm, I'm, I'm only looking at the last Punjab. assembly elections. I'm looking at the last assembly elections. I'm looking at the data from the last assembly elections. How, uh, uh, 117 seats for the Aam Aadmi Party, uh, 92, so, are, uh, 92 seats for AAP out of 117. Congress gets 18. The mighty Akalis only get three. The BJP had two. You're now down to 18.38% of vote share. My friend, in politics, things move very fast. And on the, at the ground level, if you go to Punjab, you will see things have moved. The kind of crowds that Mr. Sukhbir Badal is drawing today are unprecedented. The way people are now coming to Akali Dal is unprecedented. Have you seen there are people leaving parties and joining other parties? Have you seen one Akali Dal leader leave? In fact, they're all coming back. Why are they coming back? Because they know that it's a strong party it is going to do well, and the future of Punjab is linked with the Akali Dal. It's a reach, strong regional party. And you will see the results on the 1st of June, that, or, or the 4th of June, when the results come out. We are going to do exceptionally well. No, but we've already had Ravneet Singh Bittu. And if we did not have that confidence... The Ludhiana MP joined the Bharatiya Janata Party. I now, said if we did not have the confidence... Now the Jalandhar MP Sushil Kumar yes. Rinku is also joining uh, the BJP uh, Sheetal. Uh, Angural has joined the BJP, Jalandhar West MLA 
it seems that a lot of the traffic is in fact after it was announced that there's no alliance with the Akalis, a lot of the political traffic now seems to be going to the BJP, sir. This is the season for migratory birds. People who feel that they would be denied tickets by their own parties are now migrating to other parties. Now, I don't want to comment on their performance, but the fact is that if they have a feeling that their own political party will not uh, give them the ticket again and they move, that really goes to show their, their political plight. But sir, like a bit too, there was no indication that he wouldn't be given the ticket. Maybe he thinks that the BJP is a safer pasture for him and which is why he's chosen to go. That is what not I am hearing. I, I believe he, the, in, there were indications that he may not get the Congress ticket and he thinks that he, he, he could uh, do better with, with, with the BJP. But the fact is that the, the, if you look pan Punjab, BJP at best, like you saw in the by-election in Jalandhar, where half a dozen ministers went and parked themselves there for a couple of weeks, where the, the senior leadership of RSS was there, Despite that, they could not touch 18% vote share. Now, even when four parties fight, the threshold to, to become an MP would be somewhere near 28-29%. Now, I don't see that happening when these migratory birds move to BJP. Yes, they could improve their margin by 2%, 3%, but to touch 28, 29, 30%, I don't think is possible. Finally, is a... Alliance still possibly on the cards because the elections in Punjab are last last phase, first of June. So you still have some time to change your mind. Is there behind the scene dialogue still on between the Akalis of the BJP or does no really mean no? No, right now it is a no because there are no dialogues happening. There are no talks happening. We have put forward our demands. We have put forward the aspirations of the, the, the farmers, the aspirations of the Sikh community, the aspirations of the Punjabis. Now, that's up to BJP to decide whether they are willing to concede anything or not. If not, then we fight separately and we will all see the results and we will all see how much we are loved in Punjab on the 4th of June when the results come out. All right, we'll all find out who's loved in Punjab on the 4th of June indeed. Naresh Gujral for joining us. Thank you very much. Wish you all the best. I want to now go across live and exclusive at this time to Taranjit Sandhu, formerly India's ambassador to the United States, now uh, likely the BJP candidate from Amritsar. He's announced he's joining the BJP and has been out and about uh, in the city and in the rural areas of this holy city, trying already to canvas for votes. Ambassador Sandhu, it's great to have you with us. Welcome. This is the first time we're speaking about your political foray. Last we spoke, I remember, was at your residence in uh, Washington, D.C., that uh, magnificent estate which you had, uh, where we walked around. And at that time, we were discussing Prime Minister Narendra Modi's successful state visit to the United States. From there, you're now part of uh, Team Modi, padding up on the political pitch. So why this spirit from uh, the corridors of uh, Capitol Hill to the gullies and kuchas of Amritsar. Namaskar Rahul. It's wonderful to connect with you. Absolutely, I recall our last interview. In fact, uh, on the slopes of the famous India House in Washington, D.C. And indeed, after a very successful state visit of Prime Minister Modi to Washington, D.C. And that was in 2023. Well, you asked me for the change. I would say, actually, Rahul, for me, that was also a public service. And this is a continuation. It's a different kind of a public service, but it is indeed. There, as ambassador, I succeeded in connecting United States and Bharat. And here, I am trying to connect Amritsar with India, with Bharat, and also internationally. Okay, you come from a very uh, respected Punjabi family. I just want to tell our viewers 
for a bit of context who may not know ambassador sandhu is the grandson of teja singh samundri uh, heir to a very rich uh, sikh legacy teja singh samundri left the uh, british indian army joined the freedom movement uh, was involved in the gurdwara reforms uh, movement he died in a jail in lahore in 1926 the headquarters of the shirumani gurdwara prabandhak committee at the golden temple is in fact named the teja singh samundri hall in the memory of uh, ambassador sandhu's grandfather and his father bishan singh samundri uh, was a very well known principal of the famous khalsa college in amritsar and the uh, founder vice chancellor of the guru nanak dev university so that's a strong pedigree in the social cultural milieu of punjab is this something that had been bubbling in your head for a while mr sandhu that after you hang up your ifs uh, boots you wanted to be a politician or is it something that happened uh, all of a sudden rahul i am actually treating my move to amritsar which is my hometown as you pointed out uh, as an extension in public service i do feel very strongly looking at the condition of amritsar Today, because you know, Amritsar was one of the top five cities at independence, and it may be just information, but interesting information for you that you know the trade, commerce, agriculture of Amritsar was established by none other than Guru, the Guru who founded Amritsar, and from that time to independence. we call it guru ramdas or it was guru ramdas who had set up amritsar and we are very proud of that legacy but today amritsar requires a lot of things which i feel that my contacts and my connections back in the us as well as my friends and colleagues in the government of india can help in that and here particularly i like to mention you know the last 10 years i have worked with prime minister modi closely in united states as deputy ambassador then as ambassador to sri lanka and finally as ambassador to united states the last 4 years particularly the relationship with the united states has transformed into what i call is the partnership you look at healthcare you look at it digital startup you look at the investments in semiconductors you look at the investment in solar etc etc ibm google you know cell phones being produced here i feel that amritsar should not miss out this opportunity and this is not only a personal task it's a national task because amritsar also has 45% of its population which is very young and youth and you know youth have energy and therefore we need to give them the correct guidance and use their talent for productivity and i think these skills increase in incomes that is both in agriculture industry trade and if i may surprise you that currently even today rahul 150000 visitors visit amritsar every day and on the weekend they go up to 2 and a half lakh you can imagine what is the potential of that so what is it about uh, officers from the indian foreign services and the bjp of prime minister modi whether it is dr jay shankar hardeep puri yourself you know they all end up being blue eyed boys get these plump positions you know he seems more partial towards the ifs than to the other services i think rahul you are being mischievous yourself i think each of these have brought contributions and i don't need to elaborate over that but i am focused on amritsar and you know for amritsar trying to do this it's very important today uh, as i mentioned to you you know there are a lot of indian americans who are punjabis and who are from amritsar i know a line of people who are willing to invest in the city help out in the cleanliness bringing it back to home. you know i've been telling my ambassadors that if indore can change in last 6 years to one of the most beautiful cities of india 
then why not Amritsar? And perhaps we can together work because Amritsar is going to celebrate 450 years in 2027. And by 2027, we should be a competition to Indore and become once again one of the top cities of India. Wish you all the best and thank you for joining us in your new Aftar Taranjit Singh Sandhu. Thank you very much, sir. Thank <laughs> you.